Holy shike, let's talk about pigs. Here's your host of the Pork Podcast, Jennifer Shike. There's just something about the story behind the story. And as a storyteller, I'm always searching for ways to give readers just a little bit more. And that's what the Pork Podcast is all about, bringing you stories of the people and the progress of the pork industry. I'm Jennifer Shike. Let's go find just a little bit more. Well, I am so excited to welcome Iowa State linebacker Caleb Bacon and Iowa Pork Producer Association's Communications Director Kevin Hall to the Pork Podcast today. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you guys for having us. So, Caleb, before we get started here, I just want to say thank you to you and your teammates on behalf of the entire pork industry for all that you've done to help us promote pork and specifically bacon. Um, But before we get started here, I'd love to just know, like, what's your story? How did you get from Lake Mills, Iowa to where you are today at Iowa State? Yeah, uh, thanks for having us on, uh, me on. But uh, really, my story, uh, I didn't wasn't really like super highly recruited, I guess, out of high school. Um, I've kind of talked about that before, but I didn't really have any uh, division one offers. And I knew that's kind of where I wanted to play. And uh, I would say I ended up reaching out late uh, sometime in December. Um, And I kind of just like within a week after they had talked to me, kind of just immediately decided that's where I wanted to be at, talked to some of the coaches and, you know, they all seem really genuine and here I am today. You're lucky for Iowa State, right? Um, I know that the season maybe hasn't started off exactly as you had hoped, of course. Um, but despite your injury that you had at the beginning of the season, you continue to be a, a strong voice and a leader for your team. And so tell me a little bit what it's like to be a leader on the team at Iowa State. How is that different from your experiences in high school? Yeah, um, I mean, it's definitely a lot uh, different on that stage. Uh, my, I feel like my role has shifted a little bit uh, since that first game. Uh, it's definitely a lot of different leading now um, when you're a guy who's injured, um, but it's still just being there for your teammates, uh, not treating it any different than, you know, you would if you're playing right now. Um, but a lot of those guys, you know, they respect they respect the leaders. You know, you give them respect back and all just kind of meshes together. Definitely watched a lot of young athletes over the years step up and be leaders, even when they were injured. And and I think like your ability to like show up and and all the work that you have to do to get back to where you need to be is always so impressive and and says so much. Um, sometimes you don't even really have to say anything. Uh, you being there and the work that you're putting in to get better is is what people see. And so. Um, appreciate that leadership role. And, you know, Kevin, I want to switch gears just a little bit to um, congratulate you on all the work that you've done to make the Iowa Pork Producers Association's um, successful campaign come to life with the Purchase More Ham and Bacon Initiative. Um, And so I still remember when my husband sent me that photo that went viral. He was like, did you see this? You better write about this. And I said, don't worry. Don't worry. We're on it. And uh, we're definitely taking note of this. And so, gosh, so much has happened since then. Can you fill us in on how the process came to fruition? Yeah, it all started. It was Iowa State's first game of the season last year, and Caleb was on the field next to Tommy Hammond. You saw the backs of their jerseys, Hammond Bacon. And an Iowa State fan uh, took a picture of it, tweeted it out, and said, hey, Iowa Pork, can we get these guys an NIL deal? And I immediately saw it and had multiple people texting me. We had other members of our staff getting the text, and we're all like, heck yeah, we can get them an NIL deal. And we moved quickly um, to work with the We Will Collective, which is Iowa State's organization that uh, handles NIL for the athletes and kind of organizes and arranges things. And we looked down the roster, and not only was there ham and bacon, but there was also Miles Purchase and Tyler Moore. So you put it all together, purchase more ham and bacon. So about three weeks later, we arranged for those guys to show up for a photo shoot. I spent the weekend cooking ham and uh, about 14 pounds of bacon. And uh, we put we just put the picture out there. It was just a picture and it just went insanely viral. Around 20 million views when you put all the social media platforms together just to that one picture, and it got national media attention. It was mentioned during the broadcasts of their games on ESPN and Fox Sports 1, and it was just an amazing uh, opportunity that we just jumped on, and uh, it's been so much fun to see how much 
people really enjoyed it. Well, kudos to you guys for for stepping up and saying, okay, yeah, let's try this because it, it really is something new for for what you have typically done in your role. So tell me a little bit about how do NIL deals work? Uh, give us a little bit of background on that, Kevin. It's kind of a new thing that uh, really started about four or five years ago. Uh, there's been a long-term building momentum uh, towards should college, college athletes get paid, not necessarily for their on-field performance, but for using their name and likeness uh, off the field. And so it became legal not too many years ago, and uh, it's still an evolving thing. It, next year is going to look different than what it looks like this year, but uh, the We Will Collective at Iowa State has really been so crucial in helping us organize that. And they're in contact with the players. They help arrange things. And so we had an existing relationship with them, as well as Cyclone Sports Properties, which uh, sells like the media rights for Iowa State University Athletics. And we were able to use those partnerships to reach out to the right people and just arrange things. And they've helped set up the arrangements with the players whenever we've tried to work with them. And it's just been a great partnership. So, Caleb, how have NIL deals opened doors for you as a student athlete? Um, yeah, it's definitely a new thing, like Kevin said. Uh, I think it's taken some time to get used to. Um, you know, a lot of guys are, you know, making a lot of money doing stuff. But uh, I feel like we've kind of gotten the hang of it here at Iowa State. Um, you know, there's a lot of programs that, you know, are, you know, getting paid and not really, you know, putting a lot. Uh, stuff out there for the community, but the We Will does a pretty good job of uh, basically making us work for uh, like the payments and stuff we're getting. Like we'll we'll go out and do like community service meetings, things like that. Uh, we'll just go out in the public eye, um, kind of just do things like that, which has been really fun to work through them and other other fun fun opportunities like with Iowa Pork. Um, there's just a lot of ways that they've been able to get student that student athletes involved. What do you enjoy most about being a part of this program? Have you had any fun stories or any anything that sticks out as kind of a highlight of what you've enjoyed about being a part of this campaign? I think it's really just all the creativity that uh, we've been able to do. Um, like the last um, event with Purchase More Ham and Bacon when we were bringing out all the new athletes, I when we first showed up to film that, I really just didn't know what was next. We just kept coming out with more and more uh, more and more athletes that can, they kept figuring out how to make their last names. And I feel like the creativity of that had been really cool to see in our last filming. I love it. It was, it's been so much fun to watch. And so it was recently announced that somebody who's kind of near and dear to your heart has just joined and earned a spot in the promotion. Your little brother, Logan is going to be not only following in your steps as a preferred walk on at Iowa state this fall, but he's also following in your footsteps and is being a part of this uh, campaign initiative. So what's it like? Do you guys get along and uh, what is it like to you to be able to experience this together? Uh, yeah, we get along good enough. My parents will say we fight a lot more than we say, but that's fine. Um, but a lot of people have joked. It was really funny when he came on, they were like, man, you got the easiest NIL deal of all time. He'd been here for a month when he got here in the summer and we were already doing, um, that filming, but yeah, it's cool to get him involved too. Um, you know, just being like a preferred walk on stuff like that makes a big difference. And, uh, you know, being able to pay for call it like your tuition and things like that. So, yeah, it's really cool to get him involved in this and hopefully continue it. I love it. So, Kevin, as a fellow ad communicator, I'm just going to admit that I'm insanely jealous of this super cool opportunity that you've had. Uh, what's it like to work with the players? And I guess on that note, too, how do you think this campaign is going to help all of agriculture by showing the power of thinking outside of the box just a little bit? You know, it's been fantastic to work with. I mean, these guys, Caleb's a great student athlete, a scholar athlete as well. And uh, they've had so much fun with it. And, uh, you know, they're, get, they're getting paid probably not what, what they deserve. I mean, as viral as that uh, initial picture went last year. But um, 
they've been so good at wanting to give back to their communities. So each time we bring in a student athlete with this, we donate a thousand dollars worth of pork to the food bank of food pan or food pantry of their choice. And all of them have chosen a food pantry in their hometowns. So in Lake Mills, where Caleb actually showed up last year, where we did the donation. Um, and this year they're going to get $2,000 worth of pork uh, because Logan Bacon has agreed to donate his $1,000 worth of pork uh, to the Lake Mills food shelf as well. So, you know, these guys, they've, they've had fun with it. They've been great ambassadors for the pork industry, uh, as well as great ambassadors for Iowa State University, of course, and, and really the whole state of Iowa. I mean, it's a big ag state. Iowa State is an agricultural school. It was just a perfect storm for it to all come together with the perfect names at the right time. And uh, it's it's been great. They've been fantastic to work with. I think for ag communicators, NIL has opened a lot of new opportunities. And uh, Minnesota Pork was able to kind of look at what we did with Purchase More Ham and Bacon. And they saw a couple of Olympic athletes, Log or, uh, Cook and Bacon, uh, synchronized Olympic drivers from up divers from up there in Minnesota, and they were able to get a partnership with them over the summer during the Olympics. So there's a lot of great opportunity, and it doesn't have to be a million dollar deal. Um, you know, it's, it can be affordable, and you just got to think outside the box a little bit. I think that's the key. Obviously, you know, agriculture um, has stepped up and said, great job. But not just that. I mean, you, sure, you've won some awards through NAMA and other groups, but you've also been named the best NIL deal of 2023 from the Sport Business Journal. So talk to me about how it felt to be a part of this. Kevin, what did that mean to you as a communicator? You know, a, as somebody who grew up as a big sports fan and reading Sports Illustrated and then to see the promotion that I was working on featured in Sports Illustrated, uh, that was amazing. It talked about on ESPN uh, and then the Sports Business Journal. That's kind of if, if you're in the sports industry, the sports business side of it, that's kind of the Bible for that industry. And to be recognized by that, I, I mean, it was really cool. And this is a team effort. It wasn't just me. Joyce Hoppus, who I work with closely on this, has been a crucial part of this. Brent Bloom with the We Will Collective and, of course, the players. Um, and Iowa Pork has been so so supportive of this. Of course, our board members and the whole staff, really. It's It's been a team effort. Um, and it's just been an amazing experience for all of us. You know, Caleb, that's kind of a lot of responsibility, too. You know, you have extra eyes watching you all the time, um, but also a lot of extra attention on ESPN and different networks. So what has it meant to you to be able to see this campaign be so successful and, I guess, achieve awards and get that recognition, but also recognizing that, you know, you're a pivotal part of that and um, you've got a lot of people watching you? Yeah, it was really uh, cool to bring all that notoriety to my home state and like agriculture in Iowa. Um, I know a lot of us were kind of in awe that first couple of days when the views just kept going up and up and we we're on ESPN. Um, we we're on all these different all these different magazines, all these different websites like it was kind of really surreal for us. But it's just been really cool to see all the notoriety that um, not only. Iowa's gotten, Iowa State, um, Iowa Pork. It's been really cool to see. Yeah, it's been really cool to see. And I would say that Iowa pork producers are, are so ecstatic about it. I always like to talk to different people um, about the guests that we're going to have on the podcast. And so this time I was able to talk to two Iowa pork producers, but Trish Cook, um, a pig farmer from Winthrop, Iowa, said, it has been such a joy to see the Purchase More Ham and Bacon campaign go viral and touch people across our state and country. It has put smiles on producers' faces to see a creative way to showcase our products. So, Kevin... From your perspective, how is this helping producers' morale during what we all know has been an incredibly difficult season in the pork industry? Um, it, it's been tough for producers out there. So what what is an opportunity to, like this provide to them during a time like this? In 2023, was especially hard for the pork industry. Uh, you know, they were losing $30, $35 on every hog. And uh, this was a bright spot for them. This put a smile on their faces, a fun way to promote agriculture from right here in Iowa, the number one pork producing state in the nation. And uh, even Hawkeye fans love this. I ran into a guy at the grocery store the other day, I had my purchase more ham and bacon shirt on. And, and he said to me, I'm a Hawk fan, but that's the best NIL, NIL deal I've ever seen. 
Um, the producers loved it. They really did. They gravitated to it. We printed posters, about 10,000 posters, and so many of them uh, snatched those up. It's in ag classrooms and high schools all across the state. So that's been a very positive thing to put a smile on their face. I mean, we are here. The whole point of our organization is to support the pork producers in the state of Iowa. And that was one way we could do it. This year has been beneficial to add a retail component to it. Not, not only were we encouraging people to purchase more ham and bacon and other pork products, but now we've partnered with High Bee to really push the product in the store, and we can see some tangible results. I love that. I think that's so important. We all know that we need to continually find new ways to increase pork demand, uh, you know, especially here in our own country. And um, I love I love seeing those campaigns going at hy That's so great. Do you think that it's opening people's minds to consuming more pork? I mean, how do you think something like this can be a tool to drive more pork sales? You know, the, the thing with it last year is it got so much attention, not just going viral on all the social media platforms, but national attention. Well, we had no real way to trace the sales, but, you know, people enjoyed it. They they saw it and they're like, OK, yeah, I, I want to go purchase some ham and bacon. Um, so I think it is opening eyes and, and making people smile. And when you can do that, we can reach them on a personal level that encourages them to maybe open their pocketbook and buy some pork. So I, I think it certainly helped. We don't have, have a way of knowing how much it helped last year. This year, we're going to be able to track it a little bit and get some results back from Hy-Vee on how much pork they are able to sell during this uh, fall tailgating campaign. The news that just came out recently about Iowa Pork Producers Association agreeing to NIL deals with all with 19 Iowa State University student athletes. That's just incredible. Kevin, why is this so important to um, Iowa food banks? How is this making a difference for your state beyond benefiting 19 student athletes? How is it going above and beyond that? So I mentioned earlier, we're donating $1,000 worth of pork to each student athlete's food bank or food pantry of choice. We also announced that we are donating in conjunction with that $16,000 worth of pork to the Iowa Food Bank Association, and they can decide where the needs fit best in food pantries all across the state. $35,000 worth of pork, that's almost 50,000 servings of valuable protein. And pork is packed with protein. It is a great source of protein, packed with nutrients that are good for your body. And this will help families in need. Um, food insecurity is unfortunately a major issue, not here in Iowa, but all across the country. And this is gonna help a lot of food banks here in Iowa, but also in the players' hometowns who aren't from Iowa, places like Denver and Central Florida and down in Missouri in the Kansas City area. So it's going to do a lot of good in the community, and we're so thankful to Caleb Bacon and all the other student athletes who helped us make that possible. I love what Matt Gent, who is a pig farmer from Wellman, Iowa, near where I grew up, but he also serves as the president of the Iowa Pork Producers Association. He said, this campaign is such a fun way to encourage people to buy pork, bring some recognition to these players, and to provide meals to families in need. So, Caleb, I'd love to hear your perspective on that. I mean, you come from a, a smaller a smaller community in Iowa where those donations that have been given in your name and in your brother's name are really going to make a big difference. What does it mean to you to be able to give back to your community in this way? Yeah. Um, like Kevin said, I actually went home uh, back to Lake Mills sometime last year and was part of uh, giving them the thousand uh, dollars of pork. And just to see some of the people who work at the food bank and um, who own the food bank light up, it was it was really cool to see because I could just tell I'm not sure exactly how much um, you know money or how much food they get per year, but that that thousand dollars definitely made a giant impact on their food bank. So. Things like that, and especially with my with Logan's now, I mean, it's just it's just super cool to see back in a hometown like that, and especially a, a small food bank like that, it'll be a big impact. Well, I think it's a great encouragement and reminder to all of us that we can help support our local food banks every day, like anytime. There's always that need for food, and we don't have to make huge donations. I mean, sometimes I'm reminded and inspired by our little 4-H club that you know, 
50 cans of canned food makes a difference and, and goes a ways to help feed people. And so I think we all need to remember that we we play a role in supporting our local communities. And it doesn't have to be a $1,000 donation of pork. It can be some canned goods. It can be, you know, a couple hundred dollars. There's a lot of ways to make an impact. So I just want to say thank you guys for, for, you know, getting behind that and living that out and what you do. And, you know, I'd like to transition to the really hard questions of the day, Caleb. So, you know, I guess my, my biggest question and the question that's been on my mind since day one is, do you even like to eat bacon? Yeah, I get that a lot. Um, to be honest, when I was younger, I wasn't the biggest bacon fan. But since I've gotten to college, um, I don't know if it's just the pork and aims or what, but I've started to eat a lot more of it. Um, so just since I've gotten down here and even when I go back home now, my mom will always, my mom is always sure to make a lot of it. So I've definitely, it's definitely started to grow on me since I've got down here. So how much bacon do you think that you eat like in a typical week? Typical week, probably, I don't know, two, three servings every other day type thing. I'll, I'll switch it up. I'll go back and forth between like sausage and bacon stuff like that I like to switch it up a little bit so what is your favorite kind of pork i think just bacon would be up there or just like pork loin wrapped mm-hmm. in bacon i like that too yeah i would agree that's that's probably one of my favorite ways i love pork tenderloin and um i feel like it's such a great way to not only get protein but it also tastes good if you cook it right and so um i'm a huge fan of that but definitely sounds like the protein punch helps you off the field too so you know as kevin mentioned earlier you're a scholar and that you do a great job um keeping up your grades while balancing being a full-time athlete so i'm just curious because sometimes i feel like i can hardly balance you know all the tasks in my day how do you balance the the crazy demands of being a student athlete i think it really just always uh falls on the people that you're around um, you know, we have a lot of great staff around us. We have academic staff upstairs in our facility that really help you take that uh, bit kind of off your plate of academics. Like really, you got anything, anything academic wise, you go talk to them. They'll help you sort it out. Uh, there's always like nutrition is even like a huge thing. You got to balance throughout the day. Guys lose weight all the time. Um, so keeping that up, we have a good nutrition staff that helps us balance that. And really just having a, a good uh, like written down schedule. So that you uh, kind of know what you're just doing every day. And I would say that's the main thing is your uh, time management. Yeah, for sure. Well, I mean, Iowa State has had such an incredible start to their season. I mean, obviously, you you knew that your team was going to be good and you you knew that you guys could do this. But are you a little bit surprised? Has it been better than you thought? Is it what you expected? Talk to us a little bit about, you know, what you think the success can be attributed to this year. Yeah, I mean, to be completely honest, uh, this is really how I thought the season was going to go. Um, that's why I was really disappointed to, you know, get injured the first game. But I think it's everyone just has like an elite level of confidence right now um, in each other, uh, in each, in like yourself and in your uh, entire team. And I think that's shown throughout every single game. You know, there's been points where we've uh, been in low places, things haven't gone our way, we've been able to fight back. And that's just, uh, us just being able to come together as a team. And we just, we talk about the word together and that means a lot to us. So uh, we're all just a lot, a lot of trust, a lot of trust in each other to go out there and just perform our job. That's so cool. You know, I, I think about the challenges that the pork industry has been through. It's been a year where we've had to really come together too, to work through a lot of, a lot of challenges, but also there've been a lot of great opportunities. And I think this is an opportunity that has been fun to see the industry get behind, to get excited about, um, just to bring a smile to people's faces and also to help remind people outside of our industry that, you know, you should be going out and purchasing more ham and bacon. And uh, now it's going to be purchase more bacon, ham and bacon, correct? That is correct. Yeah. With the, with the, the double bacon or junior bacon. I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of different ways to go with it. But uh, yeah, I everything. Yeah. You can never have too much bacon. So uh, it's it's worked out well. 
I 100% agree. You can definitely never have too much bacon for sure. And, and you know what? I just want to say thank you again for joining us today. Caleb, I know you're so busy. Um, you don't have a lot of free time. It means a lot to, to us here at Farm Journal's Pork that you took time to be a part of the Pork Podcast today. Thank you, Kevin, for helping us get this done and for all that you do to be such a great ambassador for the U.S. pork industry and Iowa pork, of course. But I want to encourage all of you guys to dive into more of the Pork Podcast on Farm Journal's YouTube channel. Listen to it anywhere pork podcasts are found. I'm Jennifer Scheich, finding the story behind the story.